What's up everybody? So today we're going to be making 10 customer parts out of 6061 aluminum and check this thing out. We got super thin walls. The entire part is an eighth of an inch thick. Now if you're a machinist, you know that machining thin walled parts can be extremely challenging. But today I'm going to show you guys exactly how we process this part. Make some chips. For our first two parts, we're going to be running dry, and that's just so you guys can see what's happening. But for each subsequent part, I'm going to be using Blazer's SkyTech 500. It's a great coolant. It's a couple hundred dollars cheaper than Synergy 735. It's good for all materials, and it doesn't require DI water. Now, normally, a part like this would be made out of sheet metal, and they'd put it either in a hydroform press or a drop hammer. Now, the customer only needs five parts. So it's not a very high volume run, so we're going to machine it out of solid billet. Alright, so our first operation is complete. Now I want to talk about a few of the process steps that I used here to give us a successful outcome. So number one, normally I would machine the cosmetic surfaces on a part like this first, but by doing the inside of the part first instead, I'm able to keep the tabs on a nice flat surface for our second operation. This also makes the second op fixture a lot easier to use. Second, because the inside of this part isn't cosmetic and it's just air flowing through the inside, I was able to use zigzag for all of my fillet finishing. Now if the inside surfaces of this part had been cosmetic, I would have needed to use climb cutting only. Climb cutting is going to give you a superior finish every time. And you can see here on this fillet all these little marks. That's from the conventional cut pushing a chip in front of the cutter. But luckily for me, the inside of the part isn't cosmetic at all. The third thing I did was, you can see here on the outside shape of the part, I cut a 30 thousandths deep valley. The reason I did that is I know for our second operation I'm going to be finishing the contour of the part using a 3 quarter end mill that has a 30 thou nose radius. So had I not done this, then the second operation would have left a 30 thou cusp around the outside unless I put in a flat end mill to finish that contour with. Alright, we got our first op wrapped up, now it's time to make our fixtures for the second op. Oh, so 
All right, so this is the first part that I've programmed in SolidCam, and I've been really impressed with it coming from MasterCam. So let's take a look at the order of operations that I used for processing the second operation of this part. If we take a look at the state that our part's in right now, we have all of our fillets on the underside machined, and we have this hat on top of our material, so the first thing I'm gonna do is remove that hat. Now there's a lot of ways I could have done this. I could have just roughed it out using a full slot strategy and tabbed that hat of material on, and then had a M0 stop for the operator to break that hat free. But personally, I prefer to leave the machine unattended and not have any problems or not have any manual machine stops in there for the operator to intervene. So we're gonna turn that entire hat into chips. Now right now, the web of my material is about 300 thousandths thick, so it's nice and strong. But if I were to go in and face the top of this right now, then my entire part would only be an eighth of an inch thick and I would probably run into a lot of chatter issues. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start machining my big external fillet now, starting from the bottom and working my way up. The reason that I'm doing that is because if this material starts to relieve, I've already machined the stuff at the bottom, and the bottom is what would start relieving first. So as I work my way up, I'm gonna keep my parts strong and not be gouging material that's already been finished machined. So you can see here, we're working our way from the bottom up. And like I said, if this started to relieve, it's already been machined straight to finish size, so I don't have to worry about coming back when my part is now weak and floppy. Now we're going to do the same thing with this external fillet on the back side. And now that both of our fillets are done, I can come and face this material off the top to get to our eighth inch thickness. And this time we're going to work from the outside towards our pads. After we have the top of our part face the thickness, the very last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and cut our tabs to about 20 thousandths thickness. So you can see that the order of operations on a part like this is critical to achieving a good finished part. Now, these two components are centerline symmetrical. So everything that I've already done for the left-hand side, I'm gonna also have to do for the right-hand side part. She's light, and she's right. Now, one of the things I love about our Siemens control is we can name tools whatever we want. So like Jesse has a chip fan named Barry, so he always has a fan. For instance, my chip fan, I've named Barry. So no matter what machine I go to, if I see Barry, I know that I've got a fan. That I've got a fan. I have a tool named Jesse because it's a tiny little end mill and it always reminds me there's somebody out there with a smaller tool than you.
So if we take a look at the two halves of the part together, we can see that everything matched up really well. I'm super happy with this because it means the part didn't warp like crazy while we machined it. Machine and thin walled parts can be a bit of a pain, but if you approach it the right way, you'll nail it almost every time. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys again soon. All right, Dre, it's your first day and I know you have a ton of five axis and mill turn experience, but our Emco Mill 1200 came in. There were some parts I needed to make and we don't have our conveyor yet. So that brings me to your first job. I'm gonna need you to clean all of the chips out of my machine for me. Appreciate it, homie.